Greetings my friends, Gravehammer here. For today's tutorial we have a closer look on how to work transparency, opacity and concept type army into reality with striking results. To be honest, I really didn't have too much of an idea what I would want to do with my Nauthunt army, so I just started sketching and working on a concept. You can see me prepping the model here, just using astrogranite on the base and applying acryl and earth to selected spots on the miniature. The texture really brings some nice details to otherwise quite smoothly flowing ethereal appearance and I have Eric Callas uh, Johnson to thank for the inspiration. I also use the texture on the base to bring slightly more variance to otherwise quite barren team. For some reason I have never gotten a Mordant Earth to work as well as Agrelan Earth, so I would strongly recommend it over Mordant. Might be user error, or the pigment in the gel works differently, mm, I don't know. As you can see the Agrelan Earth has formed some really nice cracked effect after letting it dry, and we continue with Vallejo Black Primer. The primer will also work as a binding agent for the texture, so be sure to cover everything in a nice even coat. Next, we start working on the first transparent layer. I'm using AK Interactive White Grey, and from Citadel range I would recommend using Grey Sear. Trick here is to thin it down to a glaze and apply it in gradient layers over the model in Zenithal approach. Give a more focused blast over the crackled effects, as we want those to stand out more. Leave recesses uh, and shadows as dark as possible. Add few drops of white ink and acrylic medium to keep the paint quite transparent and give the white a bit more definition. Focus mainly on the parts with crackle texture and raised surfaces. Because how the opacity works, uh, we can use different inks to create effect when tinned down. I used uh, quite a lot of ac acrylic medium to thin down Vallejo red ink and brushed first on the base nearly 90 degree angle to form a gradient and then flip the model upside down and do a reverse zenithal running down the more shadowed bits. As you can see this creates a very nice mixture of purplish red and pink. The gradient works perfect with the more brighter white, mixing in with the shadows of opaque dark areas, shifting the color from bright pink to dark purple. And this is how our model should be looking at this point. Work the metallics as you please. I used a lead belcher to cover the chainmail and helmeted head and a retributor armor mixed with runelord brass for some golden majesty. You can mix and match different metallics here, but try and keep the tone more towards gold and flat as we do not uh, as we do want to keep that redful and ghastly feeling to the model. You are free to work some weathering if you want, but I would avoid anything too bright like verdigris or high contrast rust. For the armor parts I used wet blending with medium rust deposits as demonstrated on my Necron Doomstalker video. Mix up some Abtalum 502 black with white spirits until you have a nice flowing wash. Stipple the wash uh, over the whole model and uh, if you are afraid for the thin layers of glazed white and red you can always do a round of matte varnish before this step, but it's not required. Work the uh, black wash all over but try and avoid excess pooling. While the model is still wet, go over the parts where you can notice pooling of the wash and pick it up with a damp brush. Each time you see me move the brush off screen, I wipe it clean on an adhesive part of my body and continue working the model. We don't want to remove the wash per se, but we want to get rid of the large pools of the wash, which are certain to occur. 
the black oil will perfectly unify the transitions on the model while having minimal impact on the actual colors. It will darken down the red and purple, but just enough to have a nice gradient. Once the model is mostly dry, you can speed this up uh, with a hairdryer. Use a larger damp brush in sweeping dry brushing motion. This will work the unifying transition even more, but be careful not to smudge the areas too much. You can also use a Q-tip with a drop of white spirit if you feel like you messed up too much. The brush will pick up some excess oil from the model and spread the rest more evenly on the surfaces. The model is already looking really nice and ghastly in a proper grim dark way. Alright, to give the team a bit more aggressive and brighter contrast, we use tint down Vallejo fluorescent red. Again, because we use it more like a glaze, the transparency of the paint will work to create a more pink slash orange glow. Focus the paint more on the crackles, like ripples of nightmare stuff searching from the hounds. Now that the model has had more time to dry, the black oil wash has brought the overall color more towards a dull grey than we want. Using the earlier gr uh, white grey glaze, come over the raised areas in a zenithal style approach and work the model carefully. You can use a dry brush to achieve very much similar effect. Most of the people, uh, most of the times people are more hesitant to use air brushed layers after washes, but that's where the more transparent and opaque layers comes into play. As the paint is really really thinned down, it just increases white contrast but retains the nice transitions we worked earlier. To have a more ashen look, I do a final sprinkling pass over the lower parts of the model. This will sink in the recesses and crackles, but it's, uh, as it's very very thin, it will not undo our previous white highlight pass. The model is looking already very nice at this point, but I wanted to work the flaming bits uh, slightly more for this particular model. I used fluo red tint to a glaze and worked the flames with a brush. You can add some on the cloth and the crackle also to increase contrast slightly and adding a drop or two of pure white to the fluo red works some brighter hotspots here and there, but keep it rather simple. Just a few rounds of glazing will do. Using Garabor Crimson mixed with acrylic medium, identify and pick some of the more purple transitions and add a slight layer here and there. This is optional but works again to emphasize the transitional shadows and doesn't really add much time or effort to the process. After Garabor Crimson, lastly come over the raised areas with white grey. Keep it as transparent and subtle as possible, so you get those nice highlights and transitions. And there we go. Hopefully this tutorial answered some questions. It took me roughly around 25 hours to work the whole uh, Nighthound army to 2000 points, and it uh, looks great on tabletop. You are free to experiment and add anything you might feel useful or make it more to your own style. As always, hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and check my other social medias for more content. Happy wargaming, have fun painting and as always, stay grim dark.